Hey everybody, this is Aceto, the Forerunner Pony, better known to the OGs as FHRC Brony. And today I actually brought my second generation Toyota Forerunner into the garage today because I'm actually going to be doing some maintenance on it. Uh, mainly a power steering oil change and a regular oil change. As you can see, I actually got a, a repair, an actual OEM repair manual from eBay. I actually got two of these because these actually covers two versions. This one's actually the second version, which covers the chassis, body, and electrical. And the first version actually covers the engine itself. So today, uh, like I said, I'm gonna be changing the power steering fluid and the oil on this car. Uh, I actually went to a local parts store, grab all the things that I need. I actually bought one quart of, um, of um, Dextron uh, transmission fluid because the power steering fluid is Dextron type fluid. Um, I'll, just in case I also have an extra one over there. I got an oil filter on here. Uh, I know people are gonna be saying, ew, Fram, ew, ew, that's disgusting. Don't use Fram. Eh. I've been using Fram on, on this truck for almost two years now and I have never had any issues with it. I'm always changing my oil every three to 5,000 miles anyways. And also I got some 10W30 Mobile One high mileage oil, uh, but yeah. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started, get the car set up and get all jacked up in the air. And then I'll start doing the work. I'm gonna put two of these things on the back of the car. All right, so I'm just gonna jack this thing up, holding this thing right onto this cross member over here. This is actually connected to this. This is actually part of the steering assembly, but it's also part of the frame. Safe jacked up. I'm gonna keep this thing on on it so just to be you know play it safe. There we go. Let that hold that there for extra support. So right there. This thing right here is what I'm gonna be removing. So I'm gonna go grab my, um, first I'm gonna take this off first. So I'm gonna get some uh, pliers to get that clamp out. And we'll go from there. Okay, kinda missed a little bit. I kinda made a mess right behind there, but uh, 
Uh, I expect that this thing to be messy, actually. You don't expect to do any sort of fluid change on the car and expect it to be clean. So, well, I am gonna be wiping these now once the thing is over. So uh, I'll do the wiping off camera, so yeah. So while the thing is draining, it's t it says over here to turn the wheel left to right. So this is what I am going to do right now. Okay. Reason why it's letting me, it's telling me to do it is to allow the system to be free a fluid. Okay, so since I've done that already, the next step is to actually fill the, fill the reservoir with Dextron fluid. Now, it says over here, use Dextron 2, but unfortunately, I don't, if, as far as I'm concerned, I don't think Dextron 2 exists anymore. I think, uh, don't quote me on that, but I'm actually using Dextron 3, uh, actually, but this is actually, uh, it's for use in most Honda, Toyota, Nissan, and other imported vehicles. So this is a Toyota, so this should work. By the, plus, I put I put Dextron 3 transmission fluid on my actual transmission itself, and it still shifts just fine. So I don't know if Dextron 2 just it was no long is no longer a thing. So what I'm going to do now is go ahead and fill some T ATF onto the fluid reservoir and then I'll start the engine up and let it run for about a thousand RPMs yeah, for around one or two seconds. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead, start the car up, but only let it run for about one or two seconds and I'll just repeat the process four or five times. So what you're basically going to be seeing is after I, once I start the engine up for about one or two seconds, uh, you're going to see some, some fluid spraying out. Um, that's supposed, it's supposed to happen actually. So start engine and run it for about a thousand RPMs after one or two seconds. And then, um, it will, uh, it will, fluid will start to begin to discharge from the return hose. Then after two seconds, I'll turn off the engine and repeat uh, steps four and five. All right, so all the fluid has been drained out of the steering system. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead and reconnect the hose back to the return line, the return line hose back to here, to the pump reservoir. And then um, I'm actually going to adjust this a little bit, a little bit because uh, this thing has been squeaking while I've been, while I've been driving when I, every time I turn. So I'm gonna go ahead and fix that up. All right, there it is, all connected up. Now I'm gonna go ahead and Fill her up. First I gotta put the battery on. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and just 
fill her up with some ATF. Like I said, this uses automatic transmission fluid, specifically Dextron fluid. Sorry for hitting the camera. I do apologize. I'm gonna do now is gonna go ahead and just uh, turn the wheel left and right so at least it circulates all the way through. So that's what I'm gonna do right now. I have dropped the car down and I actually moved it further back because uh, my front tires were on the on the on a piece of carpet, so I have to back it up a little bit. So it should be on the hot side. There is some, uh, come on focus, there you go. It's not quite there, it's almost there, but not quite there. I also check for air bubbles, not much down there. But uh, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead and top it off even more. I'm actually pretty much almost done with the, with the quartz. So I'm gonna go ahead and put some more in there, do the same process, and then I'm pretty much done with the power steering system. All right, it looks like I've done a successful job with it. Um, no more, there's no, no big air bubbles in there, so I should be good. So, and the steering turns pretty smoothly now. So now, my power steering system is now full of new oil. Well, technically, new power steering fluid, which is technically automatic transmission fluid for this car but it's all new in there so now i'm gonna go ahead and jack this car up using ramps and then i'll do my oil change there we go should be oil drain pan up there so i'll just go ahead and remove that with a 14 millimeter ah. go. this should slow it should come out Watch out, gun oil is gonna gush out, so fair. Be a lot. Here we go. Now that's pretty dark. Yes, sir. So I'm gonna let it do its thing. Okay, so on the Toyota 3 VZE engine, uh, the oil filter is located right up here. So, let me see if these 
one of these wrap these oil cups, I should say, would work. Okay. One of these one of these things should fit. That one fits, looks like it, so. There we go. That one's out. So, now we can safely take this one out. Just be careful, this might gush out. There we go. There we go. Some cars have their oil filters on different locations of the engine, but uh, yeah. My mom's Mercedes Benz is not like that. It's literally on the top, but you know. It's not that bad getting up there for this truck, but you know, it's quite of a tight squeeze to get underneath there. It's a good thing mine's two-wheel drive. Some people always make fun of me saying, oh, you're not four-wheel drive. <laughs> but look at all the space I have over here, actually, to be honest with you. I got a front, if this was four-wheel drive, I got a front diff in front of me. So trying to clean up the oil is after spilling this thing, it's like a hassle. There's more stuff to actually get through. So I'm lucky that this car is not four-wheel drive. Because otherwise, this, if that oil filter was actually gushing out, I would have to also clean up the the front differential section and that's not going to be an easy feat especially when this oil pan is actually in the way so I like my two-wheel drive runner we called the Toyota enthusiast calls these things two runners but uh yeah uh, oh, that's all out so I'm just going to go ahead and wipe the Okay, that should be good. Let me take this stupid um, uh, oil uh, filter ratchet cup thing out because sometimes this thing can be stubborn to get out. So, I'm gonna be replacing that frame 3614 with a new frame 3614. This is a tough guard. It says it can last you for about uh, 15,000 miles. And some people always likes to make fun of people who use Fram. Say, oh, Fram is disgusting, blah, blah, blah. But uh, I don't, I don't keep this filter for 13, 15,000 miles. I always change the filter every time I change my oil, which is every three to 5,000 miles. And I've been having this car for almost two years already, and honestly, never had an issue. The engine has never had any sort of problems. But, uh, so yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and put this Fram filter on there. Uh, you can use Mobile One, KNN, any sort of oil filter brand you want, as long as it fits. there you don't really need a ratchet to tighten this up it's just high hand tighten because once the engine is warmed up it's gonna be it's gonna expand anyways and then uh, create a tight seal Now it's in there, hang tight. Let me go ahead and put this old filter 
into the box. All I need to do now is go ahead and put the skid plate back on and then go ahead and fill it up with some oil. For this application, I'm using High Mileage Mobile 110 W30, and the car is asking five quarts. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and start putting oil in the car. Like I said, this thing needs five quarts. So I'm just gonna go ahead and pour the whole bottle in there. I just wanna make sure it's all tight. Some of these in. 